All right, welcome to another episode of Opening the Door to Diabetes. We are here with Dr. White. We've got another special guest, and we're going to go through some specialized treatments and learn a little bit about uh, the ways that you can handle your diabetes. Thanks for joining us, Dr. White. Thanks for having me. So uh, I guess we've talked a little bit about why it's important to treat type 2 diabetes. Um, but what are sort of the reasons that you would tell your patients or the, for motivating them to take these uh, different medications or to use their insulin the right way? So, of course, as we've heard before, type 2 diabetes is an important health issue, not only in Canada, but worldwide. It still remains the leading cause of things like blindness, kidney failure, uh, and is strongly associated with heart disease risk. So, the earlier that we can recognize diabetes, and of course, prevent these outcomes through various strategies, the greater the likelihood we can reduce the burden on individual's health and of course that of the, uh, the society as a whole. Alright, that seems like a reasonable reason to go about it. So what would be some ways that you would go about treating diabetes first off when you first find out? So importantly, and this is the backbone of any treatment strategy for diabetes, this is lifestyle recommendations. So this involves meeting with a certified dietitian getting a good accounting of what you're currently doing with your diet and making appropriate adjustments. Mm -hmm. Balancing various food groups, trying to limit simple carbohydrates, and of course targeting some modest but hopefully regular and progressive weight reduction. Along with that of course would be activity levels and our goal broadly for any individual is to try and be active for a minimum of 30 minutes a day on at least five days of every single week. Okay, so we're going to be talking about medications. Are these medications in lieu of these other lifestyle uh, options? Or when you take the medications, the lifestyle changes still have to be very present? Yeah, so again, this is the most important thing, is that the hope is that the lifestyle component continues no matter what we're doing medication-wise. Uh, certainly, medications can be used in exchange for lifestyle. However, for most individuals, if that's the case, they'll typically just require more medication. The better people can engage in lifestyle adjustments and remain consistent with it, the less likelihood that we'll have to use more medications or higher doses of medications. So are these medications going to continue? Do they stay on the medications indefinitely or would this be something that you would stop treating with after a certain point? For the vast majority of individuals, medications are going to be a staple going forward in the long term. There are certainly some individuals that have great success at uh, lifestyle adjustment uh, and we can sometimes moderate or reduce the doses of medications but typically because diabetes is a progressive disease and um, patients need help as time goes by we're looking at maintaining and often adding medications to help target the various problems that have led to diabetes in the first place. So you say it's progressive, does that mean that it continues to need more medication over time? So quite possibly yes, and in many individuals on average that is exactly the case. The real problem we have with diabetes is that at the time individuals are diagnosed, they've probably already lost 50% of their body's ability to produce insulin. And if we can't slow that down, then of course this means more medications. Early diagnosis, early intervention with aggressive lifestyle change, and some classes of medications, we hope are slowing down that potential progression of diabetes. Okay. The treatments, would they be trying to reverse back from that 50% that's already lost, or is that uh, is the goal to sort of reverse the 50%? Yeah, so at this point, strategies to try and reverse this loss of insulin production uh, are very difficult to tease out. So typically what we're trying to do is help to maintain and prevent further uh, loss of insulin producing ability by the body. Okay, but you can maintain that level they were. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's our goal. Oh, for sure. Okay, so I think based on that, there's a couple other treatments that we can do. So that, would these treatments be if lifestyle changes are not cutting it, or they would just be supplementary regardless? So there are some medications, and in particular, we're talking about uh, really what is the staple medication in diabetes called metformin, uh, which is used very early on as a first-line agent. 
And we often make the decision of introducing medication early on uh, in the setting of individuals with fairly high blood sugar readings at the time of their diagnosis. So what does metformin specifically do to your diet, to your insulin levels? Or? So metformin is a, is a general concept, if you want to think about it in, in fairly easy terms, essentially helps the body use insulin more efficiently. Most individuals with type 2 diabetes, they are producing a lot of insulin, however it's just not working well. It's not allowing the sugar to be taken into the body cells for use and storage. Metformin essentially helps to aid that block that is occurring, what we refer to as insulin resistance. As we'd already talked about though, other strategies can help with this, such as diet adjustment, such as exercise. Okay, would someone take these drugs indefinitely? Oftentimes, yes. Uh, we have many, many patients with several decades of, of their diagnosis of diabetes and metformin quite typically is one that we will keep uh, as a staple medication uh, regardless of, of what, the, what their uh, progression is otherwise. It does have fairly good evidence to show that it does slow down the progression of diabetes. It slows it. Exactly. Okay. Is it similar to insulin the way we've learned that you take it regularly and as you take it, it has an effect immediately with throughout the day? Or is it a longer term thing that it stabilizes your levels and makes your cells able to take, intake more insulin? So metformin is a pill option and, and most typically people would be taking it in a couple of doses per day. Uh, it, it doesn't have an immediate effect uh, in regards to you take a pill and you can see an immediate effect. Mm -hmm. It's more of a global uh, you know, improvement of the body's uh, ability to, to manage blood sugars uh, over the 24-hour period. Okay, so you would take it, you wouldn't have to measure your blood sugar to know whether you're supposed to take your pill, you just take it regularly. Well, exactly, this is the, the benefit of it, mm -hmm. is that it's a very safe medication, it's been around for many decades, and it doesn't have any risk of causing hypoglycemia. Really? Or are, there, blood sugar. are there side effects or dangers to the drug? As I said, really, generally very safe medication. Uh, some individuals can have some side effects with it, the most common being a little bit of stomach upset. Mm -hmm. uh, this is often related to trying to increase a dose too quickly, uh, or some individuals, they, they just have a dose above which they can't tolerate. It happens relatively infrequently though. Most people do well with this medication. Uh, in terms of any other major side effects, really it, it's quite a benign medication otherwise. Okay. Well, that seems like it's a really good choice. We have other options. Are they similar competitors to this drug? Or are the other options we're going to talk about in the next episodes just sort of different tactics? Yeah, so metformin, is, as we talked about, is a starting point and, mm -hmm. and really is recommended as the first choice for virtually all individuals with type 2 diabetes. As we talk about other medications, typically we're discussing second line agents added on to metformin. Oh really? They're not competitors. <laughs> They're not necessarily competitors. They're all working Importantly, together. we're looking at other options mm -hmm. which act quite differently from metformin. For sure. Well, I think that we can give some time to talk about those in the next episode. So if you guys join us again, uh, here with Dr. White, thanks for joining us for this one and see you next time.